Wednesday morning to you all. Good morning and welcome to another edition of Newspaper Review. I am your host at Sinuke Hazan. We have interesting headlines on the front page of various newspapers. Starting with the leadership newspaper, we have alleged terrorism financing police quiz at Jairo today. Nerd strike, consultants, nurses overwhelmed, patient, patient stranded. Diabetic patient panics as drug price rise by 800%. Insulin rises to 26,000 error from 3,000 error. Glycometer 30,000 error from 6,000 error. On the front page of the Business Times, IMF inches Nigeria's 3.1% economic growth outlook on stronger reforms, least insecurity, tight financial condition, multiple taxes, insufficient power graft as constraints to businesses. Well, we move to the front page of the Tribune newspaper. Ed Killings, Bad Entry, Khan, Sultan, Urge, Federal Government, says recent bloodshed alarming on the front page of the vanguard newspaper federal government gets 17 points ultim ultimatum agony in southeast as kidnap pass lay siege to communities on the front page of the daily times newspaper labor party in fresh crisis as ot Someone's emergency emergency neck meeting and pox spreads to 19 states cases now 40. On the front page of the nation newspaper, CDS COAS military won't give in to anti democratic calls. On the front page of the punch newspaper, we have gov governor slams slammed for wasting 160 billion naira on unviable airports. On the front page of the first news newspaper, we have October showdown with federal government looms. Organizers demand release of detained protesters in Amdekanu, scraping of 1999 constitution, minimum wage increased to 200,000 naira, among others, by the end, end bad governance movement drop. Well, I'm not alone in the studio, I'm with my guest. Citizen Lolawe, good morning. Good morning. Have you been? We missed you. Yeah, I've been good. I miss you. I miss I've been on this program too. I'm glad to be back. Thank you very much, Ma. Well, on the front page of the leadership newspaper, diabetic patients panic as drug prices rise by 800%. Wow, well, that is actually touching. Because we, I know that a number of our elders, the elderly, are nursing diabetes. And unfortunately, because these are drugs that are not produced in this country, mm -hmm. they are imported. And the cr uh, prices have gone up as a result of the fall in the value of the Naira, which is as a result of the fact that Nigeria is just an import dependent country we are not producing what we consume we can, and then our penchant for imported products because there are some things that we actually produce in this country that we should be consuming but, but that we are not consuming because we want to be seen as having arrived because it is uh, believed that it is those people that are financially successful that, import. that consume imported goods. So every Nigerian wants to be seen as having arrived and want to consume imported products. Even where the locally produced product is of better that quality. quality exactly. Because I know some of our agricultural products that um, we consume, we have the local alternative that is better than the imported one, especially rice. Especially rice, yes. Yes. And the locally produced rice is more nutritious, safer. Most of the imported rice are only good for animals, but we prefer to import rice. Most Nigerians eat imported rice. Yes. When, when, but when, when you go to parties, you see people asking for father rice. Why are they asking for father rice? The sauce. 
No, not just the source, the nutrients. It's more nutritious. They are bakaliki rice. And most of the locally produced rice are far, far better because um, you can determine how long they were produced and stored. Whereas you do not know for how long mm -hmm. the imported rice have mm -hmm. been stored. You do not know the chemical that have been used to preserve them for that length of time. Apart from storage, what else? And then, pardon? I said storage conditions too. Most of them store with chemicals. Yes. And then we have forgotten that when we import a product, we have simply exported employment. And once you expo um, export employment, you have also exported wealth. And that's why Nigeria remains the uh, world capital of poverty, because we are not consuming what we produce. We're not producing what we need, and we're not consuming what we produce. Thank you very that much. That has to change. And then um, I think the government at all levels also have to increase the uh, public campaign have to um, provide information to the elderly and their caregivers on how they can live well based on what they consume. If there's this uh, slogan which says, let your food be your medicine, and, don't let, and let your medicine, medicine be your food, consume only those things that are good. And then you don't have to wait until you are down with diabetic before you start looking, before you start ensuring that you live a healthy lifestyle. Exercise is important. Balanced diet is of great essence. And then avoiding um, some um, food items that may bring down your health is also of great importance. Nutrition should be part of our curriculum from nursery school, teaching the children what is good and what is not good for consumption for the body. And parents too should enforce that because most young parents now they give their food parents on balance diet. Yes, I already said a status symbol. Thank you very much. Um, on the front page of the Business Times newspaper, IMF inches Nigeria's 3.1% growth outlook on stronger reforms. Yeah, I would say that um, actually the three points, whatever um, improvement that we have seen in our GDP is as a result of the, uh, the increase in the um, wages. But I agree with IMF that the economic our economic outlook is not looking good because of a number of factors insecurity when nigerians are not able especially farmers are not able to assess their farms for fear of being killed that means we have to continue to rely on imported food agricultural products when we can produce those um, better alternatives locally. So every Nigerian, not only the government, must look at how we can stem the rise in the, of insecurity in the country. It's a job for everybody. Also, this one, I'm holding the federal government responsible. Lack of regular supply of electricity is making cost of production to be too high. And making the prices of goods locally produced goods to be beyond the reach of an average Nigerian because the cost of production has to be passed on to the consumer also we have to look at um, other basic amenities that are required to ensure to provide a conducive environment for would-be investors and for existing manufacturers. The high cost of labor is also not making production attractive. The taxes? The tax, multiple taxation is also an issue. You pay to government, to federal government, you pay to state government, you pay to local governments, and then you pay to your community as well. Because there are 
a number of community levies that uh, manufacturers also, not only manufacturers, even residents of those communities have to pay, making the cost of living very high. Thank you very much. Now we move to the front page of Nigerian Tribune. And Kilit Banditry Khan Sultan urge federal government says recent bloodshed alarming. Yeah, I think what can, what all religious leaders and all traditional rulers need to do now is sit down and interrogate what are the root causes of insecurity or banditry in the country. We must stop uh, politicizing insecurity. We must look at the issue holistically and come up with solutions. I, I the state of insecurity is not doing Nigeria any good. And every Nigerian has a role to play. The ostentatious lifestyle of our leaders is encouraging the youth, the younger ones, to see wealth as the uh, symbol of success. That I mean material wealth. Oh, you know, for the benefit of those that are listening to us at home. Material wealth, which isn't true. Our traditional rulers, our religious leaders, must lay emphasis on character. In the past, nobody cares about what you own, your material wealth if you are not of good character. And that was why parents back then used to tell the children, remember the child of whom you are. But today, an armed robber will also say to his child, remember the child of whom you are, an armed robber. A pen robber will also say to his child, who knows that his father, his mother, is a pen robber. He's bringing home more than he or she actually earns. Say, remember the child of whom you are. And then in, the, in our religious organizations, it is these pen robbers, armed robbers, bandits that we celebrate, that are honored. Maslow hierarchy of humanity. Everybody wants to be recognized. And that's the peak of humanity. Everybody wants to be recognized. We are in a community. Nobody cares about you. Just because you have no material way to throw about. You want to celebrate a wedding that will take place just one day. And you lavish millions of naira on that. When your neighbor has not eaten. When your neighbor does not know where the next meal will come from. Our traditional rulers... Uh, celebrate money bags, giving them chieftaincy titles. When you make an armed robber, when you make a kidnapper, a chief, a chief, what are you saying to the younger ones? What are you saying to other members of the, of the society? I remember there was a time um, and um, a kidnapper, a, a kidnap a kingpin that was um, 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 being set for somewhere in Zamfara was being given a chieftain city title. It was a public outcry that made the emir of that particular town to um, yeah. retrace his steps. But a message has been passed on. We have to tackle corruption for us to be able to tackle insecurity. And then we have to also address the root cause of unemployment in Nigeria. When we have a number, a, an, an army of unemployed people, and they have to survive somehow, although that is not an excuse to go into crime, but it's also one of the... Leading causes? Yes. So these are the issues that must be addressed. It does not need to be politicized. And then it does not need to be given 
a religious baby. Thank you very much, Hadin. So that charity begins at home, and home is not just where you live, it includes your society. Moving on to the front page of the Vanguard newspaper. Agony in Southeast as kidnappers lay sage to communities. Well, like I said, why are kidnappers lay sage in, in the communities? Because they have seen that kidnapping is the most lucrative venture now in Nigeria. Nigeria. And then it is unfortunate that even despite the fact that I said it is not just a job for the government, not just a job for the security agencies, but they have an important role to play. Because the function of the government, the constitutional role of the government, is to protect lives and properties of the citizens of their respective areas, mm -hmm. either the local government, states, or federal. But the unfortunate thing is that we always focus on federal. Yeah, exactly. Security starts from the home. Have you made your home secured? How do you display your wealth? How do you care for your neighbors? Are you a brother's keeper? Then in the community, how is the community secured? Then you go to local government. What role is the local government play to ensure that the entire local government is safe? Then you come to state. What is state? What is the state government doing to ensure that the state is secured? You can see that there are different layers. Then you go to federal. Then we have the security agencies that are saddled with the responsibility of protecting lives and properties. Okay. How well have they been trained? Was the recruitment right? Was the training right? Was the, is the reward also right? Are they properly equipped? Then the issue of corruption. Who are those who get rewarded to hold juicy offices? Is it as a result of their performance on the job or a reward for sending back juicy packages to the bosses? These are the issues that must be looked at. And then their welfare. How is the government taking care of their well-being? And then the societal influence on them too. They are also seeing the way others are uh, exploiting their wealth. wealth. They also want to be seen as having arrived. Do they get paid in time? How regularly do they get retrained? What is government doing about their motivation? And how is government also checking corruption? Because most of the times, from my from experience, I have discovered that criminals always cut the heads of those security agencies so that they can be provided with security. And most often, our attitude of begging, when a criminal is caught, if he's innocent, let him face, exactly. let him go to the laws that they caught his head, our laws are there. Let the person go to let, jail. Let the person go to court and explain himself. If he's innocent or if she's innocent, she'll be left off the hook. But no! Nigerians are so pitiful. The elites will not hear of that. Our traditional rulers will not allow the law to take it take to take its course. Neither will our religious leaders. So how can we now start talking about uh, government tackling insecurity where we are as we are enablers of insecurity? Why will kidnappers not lay siege on our communities when we are ourselves 
enablers of insecurity. We only cry foul when it affects us, us directly. directly. But when it's affecting another person, it's not my side. It, sh it should it it should be allowed. So mm -hmm. that's why see it's a job for every one of us. We must all have a change of heart. We must all understand that no man is going to leave this world with whatever wealth that he or she has accrued. Not all. Through legal or illegal means. Whatever you have been blessed with is to enable you take care of your immediate neighbor. Your neighbor does not mean your blood brother or sister who are those nearest to you. In Islam, they say count the number of houses on your left, count the number of houses on your right, count the number of houses in, in front, front of you, count the number of houses behind you. If we put that into practice, there will be no need for anybody to go to bed hungry. And there will be no illegal, ill-gotten wealth to be thrown around anyhow. And there will be no reason for kidnappers to run around our streets or to make siege on our communities. communities. Exactly. So moving to the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper, we have Mpox spreads to 19 states, cases now 40. Before the comment, last week it was released that the number decreased. It was actually released by NCDC that the number actually decreased. But now, whew, 40. Yes, I think it is quite unfortunate that our governments have not been proactive. By now, every citizen of Nigeria should understand what the symptoms of MPOX are. The symptoms are simple fever, I'm joint sure. aches, joint pains, body aches, and then rashes yeah, so then when you see the symptoms what do you do where do you go to are this information available on our fingertips by now all those information should be available we should know what to do where to go to and the, the centers should be made available because this is a, a contagious uh, mm -hmm. disease we should have learned our lessons, what did we do with the lessons we learned from COVID-19, Lassa fever, um, Ebola. Ebola, yes. What did, we, what did we do with the lessons learned? We should not renege on everybody. All hands should be on them. Even the civil society, uh, society uh, organizations, the community I belong to, should be on top of the situation by now. We should embark on public enlightenment of citizens this on how of how to prevent and how to manage or uh, respond to possible cases in our environment. Exactly. They say prevention is better, better than, than cure. cure. Exactly. And it was also released that um, US aid sent a thousand ten thousand vaccines to Nigeria. Then, oh, we are short of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you so much, viewers, for watching and joining us. With that, we come to the end of today's edition of Newspaper Review. Join us tomorrow, same time, same station. I'm still your host, Astinoke Azan. Good morning and thanks for watching.